Have you heard Jesus is coming back for his bride? And the spirit and the bride say, come. Read Revelation 22, 17. And who's the bride? Read Ephesians 5, 27. Visit the website now. And the spirit and the bride say, come.org. Mail correspondence to And the spirit and the bride say, come. P.O. Box 210, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30086. Or send an email to info at And the spirit and the bride say, come.org. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank the Lord again for this opportunity that he's given us to come before you with his word. It's not by might, not by power, but by his spirit, said the Lord. And we are grateful and thankful that you are tuning in and being with us today. I'm your broadcast announcer, Elder David Marks, and I broadcast you in the spirit and the bride say come. Would you bow your head with us while we go before the Lord in prayer? Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We don't take it for granted that you allowed us to come before your people with your word. We pray that you look on the broadcast, heal, save, and deliver through your word. We pray in Jesus' name. By faith, we claim it done. Here we are again, my friend, thanking the Lord that we have the opportunity to come and share with you that Jesus is on his way back for his bride, not a girlfriend, not a fiance, and certainly not a social partner, but he's coming back for his bride, coming back for his church without a spot and a wrinkle. Today, our broadcast is entitled, The Bride of Christ, Be Ready When He Comes. The Bride of Christ, Be Ready When He Comes. You know, that is a certainty that is self-evident and true, my friend. And that is one day Jesus is coming back. We may place it in the back of our minds. We may not think about it. We may completely ignore it, cover it up with the cares of this world. But the fact remains that Jesus will be back. And the Bible said when he comes back, everything will be ready. Go to St. Luke's 14th chapter and the 17th verse. Listen, and send his servants in supper time to say unto them that were bidding, come for all things are now ready. It will be ready, my friend. And it doesn't stop there. It goes on to say, listen, that whatever we're doing, just keep doing it. Whether or not it's good or bad, the Bible said, keep doing it because there will be no opportunity, no time to change anything. Whatever we're doing, keep right on doing. Go to Revelation, the 22nd chapter. The 22nd chapter and the 11th verse. And listen to what it said. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Oh, my Lord. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. There will be no time, no opportunity, my friend, to change anything when Jesus comes back. We must be ready when he comes. You know, I'm reminded of a game that we used to play when I was a child by the name of hide and go seek. I'm sure you're familiar with that game. It it happened at the time when a person would face a tree, find a tree, and begin to count 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. And at that time while that individual is counting, everybody that's in the game is running and to find a hiding place. And after the count, that person turns around and he says or she says these words, ready or not, glory to God, ready or not, here we come. That's a signal right there that wherever we are, 
We must stay. We're not allowed to move again. If our leg is exposed, glory to God, it's exposed. If our arm is, is exposed, it will be exposed. There will be no time to do anything in that game. And you know, I had the idea that at that time, I was only playing a game. It was only a game. But I found out, glory to God, later in life, through life experiences, that that game match the way the Bible say that Jesus is coming back. Did you hear what I said? So it turned out not to be a game, but it turned out to be real life and judgment. Listen, some time ago, I had the opportunity to be blessed with one of the well-known insurance companies that I was employed with. I had that opportunity. And on this particular morning, listen at me now, on this particular morning, my supervisor came to me out of the blue sky. No warning whatsoever came to me and he said, this day, I'm going to ride with you out in the field. What? No warning. I was caught off guard completely. He said, now this morning, I'm going to ride with you. I was not ready for that. What he was saying is, I'm going to see whether you are ready or not because I'm going with you. Not a week's warning, not preparation time. Do you see where I'm going, my friend? Glory to God, hallelujah. But this morning, well, I began to scramble and try to get things together because I was caught flat-footed off guard. But I had to obey because this was my place of employment so I got this and that that and the other together but I forgot one major point in my preparations I forgot my friend to get gas in my car hallelujah well we set out on the road and immediately I noticed my fuel gauge was leaning toward empty but I, I convinced, hallelujah, look out, I, I convinced myself that I would be all right. It had happened before and I had made it. Nothing was going to happen. I convinced myself, my friend, even though my fuel gauge was telling me I was about to give out of gas. I did not pay attention. I kept right on. And I guess you can imagine what happened. That's right. You guessed it. I heard a sputtering. Then I felt the car jerk. And it came to a halt. And there sat my supervisor and myself on the side of the road out of gas. Hallelujah. A fine time to give out of gas. Of all the times to give out of gas, there we sat on the side of the road. Be ready when he comes. Jesus is coming back, my friend. Well, I was in a predicament. I was caught unready. And when the devil catches us not ready, he goes for the juggler vein. The Bible says he comes to kill, 
steal and destroy my friend. He was not satisfied with me just giving out of gas. So I got my little gas can and I proceeded to go to the filling station. Got my gas and came back, put it in the car, got in, turned the switch, and absolutely nothing happened. I said, oh, Lord, I should have been ready. I should not have just claimed in my mind, even though the sign was telling me, the field gauge, you better stop, get it together. I kept going, and it landed me, my friend, in this predicament. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Might not be gas. It might be something else. Well, the car wouldn't crank because I had left the emergency light on. The flashers. And it had drained the battery. So there we sat, gas in the car now, but because of my unreadiness, we still couldn't go anywhere. I had to call back to the office, get somebody to come out and give me a boost off, which they did. But when I got back to the office, I was the talk of the town. Glory to God, hallelujah. Be ready when he comes. But I'm not the Lone Ranger in this right here. Because it has happened before. It happened with the ten virgins in the Bible. They didn't give out of gas. They gave out of oil. Hallelujah. They gave out of oil. They were with their supervisor. They were going to meet the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. And that's where we are, my friend. You may never give out of natural gas. Be sure that your lamp is full with the spirit, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. It's a serious situation, my friend. The Bible tells us that the kingdom of heaven is like unto ten virgins that went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them was wise and five were foolish. Listen what the foolish did. The five foolish virgins took their lamps and took no oil in there. I had the car. What good is a car if, if, if it has no gas? I had the car, but I had no gas. What good is a car without no gas? That's what happened to the five foolish. But listen at the wise. The five wise virgins took all in their vessels, plus they took all with them. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Now listen what happened at midnight. Oh, Lord. My friend, midnight is coming. The world is playing us. Making a pretty picture. You got plenty of gas. They've been talking about Jesus is coming for thousands of years. He hadn't got here yet. You, you all right. Just keep going. The Bible said in the last days they will be eating, drinking, and being merry. Even to the coming of Jesus Christ, to the bridegroom come. That's how the world is going to be at. Don't pay any attention to it, my friend. Get ready. Get ready, get ready, because he's on his way back. At midnight, the Bible said, the cry was made. What was the cry? Go ye out to meet the bridegroom. Uh-oh, he coming now. The Bible says, when he comes, the sky will fall back like a scroll, and every eye shall see him. We're going to see him in the United States. They're going to see him in Japan. They will see him in Russia. They will see him in Asia, in Canada. That will all, that's all that will be in the sky. 
in order for every eye to see him. The sky will fall back. And that's all we'll see. Midnight is coming, my friend. Yes, it is. Midnight, the cry was made. Go ye out to meet the bridegroom. And then the Bible says, then all the virgins arose and turned the switch. The Bible says they all arose and trimmed their lamps. Trim means to get them lit up. And what happened? The foolish did not have any oil whatsoever in their lamps. None whatsoever. And listen what they say. The foolish virgin said unto the wise, give us your all, for our lamp have gone out. Go to Matthew 25, 9 and 10. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Listen at what it says. But the wise answer, this is what the wise answered. Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them and that sell and buy for yourselves. Hallelujah. This ain't no plaything, my friend. Hallelujah. You depending on the world? Hallelujah. We gonna be caught not ready. Listen at the 10th verse. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. My friend, listen to that. Mm -hmm. If only I had listened, if only I had paid attention to this scripture instead of playing hide and seek with my life, hallelujah, I would have been ready if only I had paid attention. I could have saved myself a lot of trouble, my friend. Number one, this is what I could have saved. Just like the ten virgins, the five that was wise, I could have been ready if I had to pay attention. I could have been ready. Mm -hmm. That's number one. I was caught off guard. No week notice. No one week notice. No day notice. My supervisor said, let's go. Wait a minute. I'm not ready. Let's go. Wait a minute. Let me get ready. Let's go. Woo, glory. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Mm. Let's go right now. Right now. No excuses. No talk. No bargaining. Let's go. I would have been ready. Number two, I could not blame my supervisor for me giving out of gas. It was not my supervisor's responsibility. It was my responsibility. The Bible said every man work out his own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Every man must give an account for the deeds that's done in his body. Ain't no need of blaming nobody in that day. The devil made me do it will not work. It will not work. Number three, I should have known that a car that was out of gas and a lamp with no oil in it was not ready. I should have known that. I should have known it. Number four, I did not believe. I did not believe. I could say I believe all I want to, and I could have tried to fool myself. Like a lot of us are fooling ourselves. But if I had believed, I would have stopped. The Bible said, why do you, Jesus said, why do you, you, you say you love me and do not my commandments? You say you love me. You say you believe, but we don't do what he say do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
I did not believe. I was under that mentality. I'm not that bad. I'm not that bad. Jesus knows. Mm -hmm. My friend, yes, he does. You know what he knows? The wages of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life. That's what Jesus knows. We are fooling ourselves into unreadiness. Uh-huh. Number five. Why the bridegroom tarries, that didn't mean that he was not coming. It's taken a while for Jesus to get back. But that does not mean we can get complacent. That doesn't mean he's not coming. He's coming, my friend. His time is not our time. Oh, yes, he'll be here. Number six, at midnight, when? That car ran out of gas. That was my midnight. You see, we may be looking to the end of the world, but our midnight might come. It doesn't matter when midnight comes. If midnight comes, it's midnight. Look out. Number seven. Then all the virgins arose. Uh-huh. All on the road, they woke up. When that car said, shook and stopped, it woke me up. But it was too late. I was out of gas then. Hallelujah. Number eight. And the foolish said, give us of your all. Help us the same way it happened to Noah. When they began to knock on the door, Noah said, sorry, my friend, God got the key and you can't get in. He locked us in here. My supervisor could not help me. He was in the same condition that I was. Both of us were sitting on the side of the road. My friend, don't put your trust in this world. Oh, glory to God. Don't put your trust in this world. There is none that will be able to deliver us in that day except the Son of Man, and that's Jesus Christ. We've got to be ready. Uh-huh. Number nine, and why they went, the bridegroom came. Listen to that. Why they were going, trying to get ready, the bride Jesus came. Jesus is not going to wait on us, my friend. Oh, no. We've got this thing that Jesus is just going to just take back everything. Glory to God. Help me, Holy Ghost. That he said in his word, 99 and a half won't do. It will not be graded on a curve. We're going to have to obey the word just like it said. There will be no special privilege. Hear me now. Stop fooling ourselves. Look out. Uh-huh. And number 10. And finally, they that were ready went in. Hear that. They that were ready went in. Hallelujah. Listen, my friend. Sin will have us playing hide and seek with the Lord. We will never get ready as long as we follow the flesh. We will never get ready. Hallelujah. We'll be playing hide and seek from now on until our midnight come. Hallelujah. Ask Adam and Eve. Jesus said it in his word and his father put it in Genesis. He came looking for Adam and Eve. The Lord came looking for Adam and Eve and couldn't find him. Said, where, where are you? Said, we over here hiding. Hiding. Why are you hiding? Because we were naked. Who told you you were naked? Have you disobeyed and sinned? Sin would have us every time playing hide and seek, my friend. 
but they that were ready went in. Yes, they did. Ready or not, here he comes. And after the wise went in, the door was shut. The door was closed. That was it. And if you read on in this scripture, you'll find out how the foolish came back and said, let us in. He said, no, I know you not. It's over, my friend. When Jesus comes back, everything is ready to be wrapped up and tied up and presented back to his father. Look out. Look out. Mm -hmm. We must be ready when Jesus comes and calls his bride, his church, his saints, or we will wind up sitting on the side of the road. The bride of Christ. To be ready when he comes. Be ready when he comes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, today for you being here with us on our broadcast. My friend, time is winding up. Hallelujah. Don't push it. Don't depend on our intellect, our prosperity, our power. We've got to do it like the Bible says. No man can enter into the kingdom of God except he come through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How do we get ready? By receiving him, his blood washes us. That's how we get ready. There is no other way. Hallelujah. Follow us, if you will. You can reach us on our website at thespiritandthebride.org. Go to the contact page. Click on the link. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, you'll find us there. Follow us, if you will. We praise the Lord for you. And we hope that this word have encouraged someone today to get ready. Every Sunday morning, as the Lord will, at 11 o'clock, be a part of our premiere, our broadcast. If you happen to go to YouTube, be sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell. It will enable us to continue these videos, this broadcast. And we thank you right now, my friend. We give God the praise and we give him all the glory through his son, Jesus Christ. You know why? Because the best is yet to come. I can't say it enough. The best is yet to come. We're on our way to that new Jerusalem and we're living in a blessed hope that one day we're gonna meet you there. Let us go. Oh,
Oh 